So one of the things that I really like to do at this time of year is take all the netting off my brassicas. They're already at the top of my net, so I don't have a big brassica cage or anything like that. And I don't use a fine mesh, I only use a butterfly mesh. So I'm just going to talk you through the logic as to why I take them off and why I use those types of nets. So what I find here on my site, and it might be different on your site, so you just have to learn from your own experience, is that we've got four classes of problems. So we've got cabbage root fly, which is actually quite a problem here. And to deal with that, I water with the fruit and veg protection nematode. I like to water the seedlings when they're in the seedling tray with it so that they're planted with that nematode in the root ball. And then every two weeks until the plants are really big and well established, uh, I'll keep on watering that. Now it just so happens that that same nematode is also protection it's not perfect against cabbage root fly, carrot fly, onion fly, and probably any other fly that's in the root zone. So it's pretty general purpose. It is not a panacea by any means. I still have my carrots netted, for example, um, but it helps. So that's what I do. So I don't use collars because it's too windy here. They just blow off. Um, so that's all I do. Now I've heard other people with all sorts of other ways of dealing with it, planting in toilet roll tubes, taking a rhubarb leaf and planting the root ball inside a rhubarb leaf, all sorts of other things. Don't do those. Um, I find that just that nematode is just enough for me. And since I've got enough in a packet and I get a packet every two weeks and I buy a batch, um, then it's, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, I, I get 60 square, enough to treat 60 square meters, and I don't have 60 square meters of carrots and onions, uh, so I have to add my brassicas onto that, and then I've got enough uh, at home and on the allotment for that 60 meter packet. So that's how I do cabbage root fly. So the second one is white fly. Generally, I don't worry too much about white fly unless it's a really bad infestation. Then I kind of blast it off with a jet of water. And if that doesn't work, then I use soapy water. And if that doesn't work, which it, to be honest, it, it almost always works because um, you can't eliminate it. You just want to keep it under control so it's not causing a problem. So it's easy to wash off at harvest time. Um, then you could use something like pyrethium. Uh, I don't, I've never tried that, never needed to do that. Next one is cabbage aphid. Now that is a real problem here. Actually this year so far, touch wood, it hasn't been a problem. But what I find, the worst of I find, problem I find is when I use a nice fine net, in theory that would keep aphids out. I always, almost always find there's some aphids in there in the first place. And they, um, they just grow and grow and grow, hidden away underneath that net. I can't see them. I see maybe a bit of leaf curl or something. By the time I take the net off to inspect it, it could be really bad. And if it gets into the growing tips of the plants, it can deform them and make them really just you know, non-functional and basically the plants are right off. So if I catch that earlier, then I will again just do what I do for a bite fly. So I'll start off just blasting the stuff off with a jet of, of water. Um, and again, if that doesn't work, then I'll just use soapy water. And again, I've never had to use pyrethium on that. So the final problem are butterflies. So I, that's the only net I use now. I just use a butterfly net. Um, and I use that because I can see through it really clearly. Mine's a black one, which helps. And as a result of being able to see through it, I can see problems with whitefly and I can see problems with cabbage aphid. So that really helps me. Uh, they don't go undiscovered. Uh, I can see the first signs of them and get that water jet blasting on them. Um, if, the, if I do find a really badly infested leaf, I'll just take that leaf off, obviously, and just throw that in the bin. Um, and I do do that, that sometimes because I'm only here every other day or every three days or something like that. And so sometimes, you know, I kind of, whoops, I just miss them. Um, and, you know, they, they, they do du uh, double in volume, you know, quite frequent, quite, quite quickly. So you only have to miss them once and then sort of after six days, they can be a bit of a problem. So anyway, that's what I do. So butterflies. So if I take the nets off as I do in the middle of July, obviously my plants are exposed. So what do I do? Let's have a walk around and have a look. 
So here we go. Just noticed a few tiny holes last time I was here in these beetroot leaves. And then now I can see the black poo from the caterpillars. And there's actually some fairly big caterpillars underneath here. So there's one. I'm actually going to take that one off because although I've sprayed with BT, that is not enough. So I wonder what sort of caterpillar that is that's eating the beetroot leaves. So anyway, I spray with BT and BT is an actual soil uh, born bacteria. It's in the soil, it could be in your soil. And the only difference we're doing is we're spraying it on the leaves. Now, here's an example of what I sometimes notice. And I'm like really annoyed when I arrive, but I think that growing tip there is going to be all right. And there's the, probably the caterpillar. That's the culprit. And hopefully, there's no more of them. Anyway, I've sprayed again with BT. So natural soil bacteria and spray it on the leaves. Now you've got some issues when you want to spray it on the leaves. Let's just quickly talk through those. If you spray it on the leaf on a nice sunny day like today, on the top of the leaf, it's just going to degrade in the UV light. And so within a few hours, it will be non-functional. If you put it on the underside of the leaf, much better. It's much more difficult to spray on the underside of the leaf. So I like to spray it on the top and the bottom of the leaf when I can, um, but get a good coating on the top, but I do it in the evening. And then the caterpillars can munch away at it all through the night, and then it'll degrade maybe by lunchtime or something the next day uh, if it's sunny. So ideally, do it when it's cloudy, but really it's all about opportun opportunity because it also gets washed off by the rain. So you kind of got to find a cloudy period of time when there's no rain and there's actual caterpillars on the leaves. So it doesn't look like I've got any caterpillars on these leaves. So I'm not bothered spraying them apart from in here in the heart leaves because that's the space the place where they're the biggest problem they're difficult to see and even on a sunny day it's kind of fairly shaded in, in there in the heart so i've given all of those a nice good spray so done the same on my colettes now these are now under shade from this tree and again i've just got it all in here I think it's fine spraying it on the top um, because caterpillars obviously eat all the way through the leaf. So they're gonna eat it whether it's on the top or the bottom. Um, but as I said, it's shadier at the, underneath the leaf. So that's the best place to do it. But if you can do it at night, spray it on the top and the bottom. It's just quicker. You get better coverage probably by spraying it on the top. So I haven't bothered spraying it on these main leaves because there's no evidence at the moment there's any caterpillars about but we did just find one of those in the heart so again I just sprayed all these hearts because you don't want to you don't wanna leave, lose these growing tips because if they eat these growing tips you've had it basically so these are all looking great no evidence anywhere so that's what I'm doing each day I'm just looking any evidence don't look under every leaf just look under maybe 20 leaves or something like that it takes like 30 seconds and if I don't see any eggs under those sort of sample leaves that I pull up, then I just don't worry about it. And I'll just wait until I see evidence. But every week or so, I'll just spray the heart leaves. So there we go. I mean, that's like, that's the kind of level of detail that I'm going to, to check those. So there's my tub and it's a granule comes with that little dispenser there. I don't know exactly how much I use. I, it does, I don't think it really matters hugely. I just probably fill that little uh, thing there. So maybe about four or five teaspoons to a 10 litre spray can. Um, 
or spray bottle rather and so you don't use a lot you don't really want to mix up more than you're going to use in a day because again it degrades with time you just want to keep it out of direct sunlight in as cool a place as you've got this one was imported from the Netherlands I think you can get it imported from America various different places you get way way more than you need and so it only really makes financial sense if you've got a lot of brassicas and a lot of friends on your allotment site who have also got lots of brassicas because you really need to share it now my tub has been going for two years now it still seems to be effective um, but I guess I just share it out with the uh, plot holders here and the plot holders there and the plot holders over there and the ones over there and I don't actually charge them for it but you know just uh, makes it makes the investment worthwhile so it can cost sort of 30 30 maybe 40 pounds um, to uh, protect all the brassicas but it's such an important crop to us and we harvest about 10,000 pounds worth of uh, fruit and veg off the allotment and our garden um, and so you know 40 pounds 10,000 pounds it's easy worth it we don't worry about it um, we just don't want to lose our winter food supply so what's your strategy for looking after your brassicas and anything else really that gets problems with uh, caterpillars now right now i've got problems for example on the beetroot in the polytunnel but the beetroot outside seem fine uh, let me know in the comments my name is steve this is the seaside kitchen garden and allotment channel and it's very hot in this polytunnel i'll see you soon